God's glory is coming upon you. The lifting power of God is coming upon you. I know you have labored, you have prayed, you have made your effort, but today, something is coming upon you. It's called the glory of God. I want your heart open. The Bible says, receive the word I pray you from my mouth and be built up. That's how good comes to you. Today, good will come to you. With great honor in my heart. With all the reverence I have in my heart. And thank God for honoring us. We have a dear, 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 dear man of God I love dearly. Apostle Joshua Selman. Libra Kappa Shatalaba. I know I have prayed. Listen to what I'm telling you. I know they think evangelists say when they say it. If you go to some of those evangelistic crusades, they said whether you believe or not. Have you heard that? Uh, even that statement will cause fit in your heart. Like the dead body of Jesus was laid there. The glory of God quickened it and raised him from the dead. That's the experience after this meeting. I thought I'd hear a better amen. I said, I thought I'd hear a better amen. So, with the fourth honor in our hearts, with gratitude to God, I want us to specially welcome this servant of the Most High God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Is that the way you clap? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Keep clapping as he comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Happy anniversary, the fourth church. The Bible says, after two days, he will revive us. And he says, on the third day, he will raise us up. And so I believe prophetically that this is the season where, as a people and as a congregation, he's lifting you even by the Spirit. If you believe that, shout aloud, Amen. Amen. I stepped in and I was so, so blessed by the worship ministration. You know, it takes... I, I can be very intellectual when listening so I, I was speaking the words and I said my God the kind of intelligence it takes to put in things like this you know let's 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 celebrate um, a very powerful mistral of God indeed and his team may God bless you in the name of Jesus and then help me honor your pastor and father and his dear wife Reverend Emmanuel Opara. thank you thank you for the honor appreciate you Hallelujah. I trust like pastor has said that God will bless us in no small way. Every, every encounter with the word is for our profiting. Every encounter with the spirit is for our profiting. Would you lift your hands to heaven and cry unto the Lord asking him to speak to your heart. Let your word come with precision let it come with power let it come with grace someone is praying shabrantes kalibaruska fretis kalehas yata pratosia shabranta kaparatos kafretis kiata palatosi lord bless you we honor you you have been good to this church you have been good to your choice servant we have come to celebrate your hand celebrate your wisdom celebrate your mercy celebrate your power lord we bless you oh oh
In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, we declare tonight that there is the hearing of faith and even the working of miracles. And we vow that to Jesus will be all the glory and all the praise. For in the mighty name of Jesus, we've worshipped. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. One of the ways that God transmits his power, in fact, the principal channel for the transmission of the power of God is the word of God. Every time the word of God comes, um, the assignment of the word, listen carefully, is beyond enlightenment. The word of God is not just limited to providing enlightenment. The word of God is a vehicle, like a tree. If I ask you to bring me water, most likely you will put that water on a tree. So if I see the tree coming, it is able to host a number of things. For many people, when they hear that the word of God is coming, they only think that it is bringing a new information and a new idea. And that is profitable. The word of God is responsible for transformation. 
the bible says in romans chapter 12 and verse 2 it says to not be conformed to this world but it says to be transformed by the renewing of your mind so the word of god sponsors transformation but there are many other things that the word of god does for instance in ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2 he said son of man stand up upon your feet and he did not have the engracing the energizing of the spirit to stand verse 2 says and the spirit entered me it was not an information that entered him it was an empowerment and it set me upon my feet hallelujah the bible says in habakkuk chapter 3 when you read habakkuk chapter 3 if we can read 3 and 4 i wish we could see it in amplified habakkuk chapter 3 from verse 3 and 4 the bible talks about god coming and speaking from mount teman okay i'll turn back or let me just use my while we wait for the media to help us the point is verse 4 let me have your attention amplified says the light that proceeded from his hand it says in that sun-like splendor is the hiding place of his power so the power of god is hidden in his light hallelujah and i have told you that i think the last time i was here or maybe listening to me in any of my teachings i've said it and it bears repeating that the anointing of the holy spirit does not have any assignment except to validate and to honor the speakings of god that means if the word of god has not gone forth the anointing remains in it the assignment the singular assignment of the word of god is to give credence and validity to the word of god so if the word of god does not proceed the, the anointing does not have an assignment the bible says and the lord walking with them confirming the word hallelujah so when god's word comes it is because he also has in mind that the engracing that follows that word to make for performance is also released i want to teach along the line of um the theme very briefly and very prophetically as a ministry god gave us this same prophetic word it's also a year of open doors and so i have taken a bit of time to study and honestly speaking quite extensively on the concept of open doors um, for my own benefit and then to be able to teach my people and so i was excited when i saw the topic because i hope to be sharing a few things that i trust by the grace of god would profit us in addition to all that pastor has turned from this altar hallelujah matthew chapter 7 please i'll read from verse 7 8 matthew chapter 7 from verse 7 and 8 jesus is teaching and he he's teaching on the matters of the kingdom the whole extended story would start from the beatitudes where he was teaching them on the matters of the kingdom and when we get to matthew chapter 7 he said ask and it shall be given unto you he says seek and you shall find then he says knock and the door shall be opened unto you is that true the next verse says for everyone so when it has to do with the possibility of open doors it is for everyone it says for everyone that asketh receiveth is that true everyone who seeks finds and to him that knocks he says it shall be open unto you hallelujah um let me just give a little background uh, i took a little extract from my teaching with my people and i thought it was important to just set this in place and then i'll just touch on a few things i wrote here and i want you to please listen and if possible write that doors are primarily authorized systems for access when you talk about doors primarily the assignment of a door is to give access the assignment of a door doors are authorized systems for access access to opportunities access to realms access to dimensions hallelujah i also wrote here that doors control motion 
doors control movement doors control motion if i desire to walk out to the outside of this this uh, beautiful tent i will need the access of that door that means if that door remains closed it can impede and even limit and even stagnate my motion so doors control movement they control motion hallelujah now doors i wrote here can also mean hindrances limitations and restrictions doors are not just limited to access points they could also mean hindrances limitations and restrictions it's very important we get this foundation let me recap very quickly i said that doors are authorized systems for access and that doors control movement and motion then i said that doors can be hindrances they can be limitations and they can be restrictions according to scripture and by the intelligence of technology we know that doors can be opened and doors can close this is a very powerful information doors can be opened and doors can close that means if you see a door that is closed all hope is not lost under a certain condition that door can be open are we together doors can open and doors can close very important information i want you to get now doors can be circumstances doors can be human entities and doors can be spirits doors can be circumstances doors can be human entities and doors can be spirit for instance jesus christ himself jesus called himself the door so doors can be circumstances doors can be human entities and doors can be spirits are we together now i said something very interesting and i wrote it here and i want you to listen all doors are usually closed by default all doors are usually closed in fact the closing and the sealing of a door is usually a representation of authenticity when you buy something it usually comes closed or sealed as proof that it is authentic is that true and then the secret or the technology of opening it is revealed to you or instinctively you find a way of opening it like a perfume or whatever it is if you buy a product a beverage or whatever and you find it opened by default it reveals to you that it may have been compromised are we still together so it is not unusual to meet closed doors they only reveal to you that you are stepping into a virgin dimension a dimension you have never treaded before job said there is a path which no fowl has seen that the whelps of the lion has not trodden there but it does not mean because you saw it closed, you must leave it closed i told you that all doors can be opened not on uh, every condition there are certain conditions and my assignment is to reveal to you the spirit the conditions that can cause closed doors to be open are we learning already now let me say a few things that i wrote here again about closed doors closed doors are not all a disadvantage please you must listen very carefully closed doors are not all a disadvantage for instance Doors are closed to restrict or to manage access until permission is granted. There are times that closed doors are an advantage. They are closed to restrict or to manage access. If doors were always open, it would lead to abuse of access. So there are times that doors are closed. Are we learning now? Doors can be closed and to manage or to restrict access until permission is granted. Closed or sealed doors, I wrote here, can increase the value of a product. So closed doors can also increase value. Are we learning? 
I wrote here again that doors can protect and preserve. For instance, the door of your car. For instance, the door of your house. For instance, the door to your safe. Doors can protect and preserve when closed. So, in dealing with the concept of open doors, we must manage our understanding to not generically frown at all closed doors because God also closes doors. Are we together now? And he closes doors as an act of his mercy. He closes doors to preserve. For instance, if the door of Elizabeth's womb was opened too early, John would have been old and weary before the arrival of Jesus. So that door had to be closed to match the timing of the arrival of Jesus. So that whilst John was agile and ready, he would be able to ordain Jesus. Because that was his assignment. So you would call it barrenness. But then it was closed by the very hand of God. And it caused that John was only six months older than Jesus. Is someone learning? So in dealing with the concept of doors, especially open doors, we must be able to manage our understanding so that we do not interpret all closed doors as demonic. Even though... Um, what we are dealing with tonight is the concept of open doors. Now, I wrote something here that I want you to listen very carefully. When you stand in front of a closed door, the first thing you need is discernment. Not the ability to open, discernment. To discern who is behind the closing of that door. Are we together? Because the anointing was only designed to correct anything that is antichrist. The anointing does not fight the will of God. The assignment of the anointing is to walk in sync and to establish the will of God. So it is important that when you stand before a closed door, your first assignment is discernment. So that you know who is behind that closed door now for tonight we are dealing with closed doors that should open for the sake of your advancement your rising and your forward movement are we together now so all my discourse on closed doors from this point i would assume that you now understand the context of open doors are we together now this is very important because you see in church it's important that believers are mentored methodically and their understanding is holistic if not when you leave you will be surprised that you will be fighting something that god designed for your good you will be forcing doors and commanding the anointing to fight the will of god and you will be surprised that the closing of that door was to your advantage are we together now So doors can open and doors can close. Someone's closed door is open now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Take note of the foundation that I laid that doors control motion. It is amazing. Listen to me. Did you know that as powerful as an individual can be, it can, you can even be the owner of a house, but if the door is closed, it can keep you outside without apology. You can stand helpless in front of that door. You are the owner, no argument. It is your house, no argument, but simply because you do not sustain the intelligence, maybe you lost the key to open the house. You can stand outside and sometimes you may have to destroy the whole door. There are forces in this kingdom that control open doors. This is where I want you to please lend me your attention. Doors do not open to sentiments. Doors are not, not an issue of prejudices and biases. There, is, there are exact forces in the spirit that have been allocated and allotted for the opening of doors. That means if you find doors, now you understand access to realms, access to dimensions. Like that doors midwife realms. Now you see in architecture, when you construct a house, you see the three D the 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 three D construction or the simulation of a house. You would see that the rooms are separated by doors. Is that true? 
so that between the living room and the kitchen the restroom and the bedrooms there are doors is that true you can be in house and not maximize your stay there because only one door is open out of the five or six that should open are we together just because you are comfortably seated in the living room does not mean that you are maximizing your experience within that house if you are hungry and the door to the kitchen is closed you can still live miserable having the same experience as one who is outside the house no wonder the bible says an heir for as long as he's a child he said he differed not from a slave that means the reality of their experience will be consistent as one who is not even saved hallelujah praise the name of the lord so there are forces we're here tonight to access by light the forces that are responsible for opening doors because i sense in my spirit that for someone you are long overdue as far as certain doors opening and you see your moving forward is consistent with scripture for it says the path of the just not everybody's path but the path of the just it says is as a shining light that shines ever brighter onto the perfect day that means there is no limitation for the believer in christ we sustain an advantage that grants us ever increasing progress your yesterday should never be better than your today and your tomorrow based on god's design that means all that i see in you today should not be all that i will see it should be layer after layer is that true may that be your testimony in the name of jesus christ that means by year four when we come to the fourth church we should see another layer of glory another layer of excellence it is true he said there are bodies terrestrial and there are bodies celestial that even among the stars one differed from another not in size in glory in glory there is the glory that excels are we together now so we're discussing the forces that control open doors and i wrote a few because i want us to have some time to pray i'll run through a few that I have listed here and please I want you to pay attention because the Spirit of God is going to be speaking to you and you must be discerning enough to receive that which is yours are we together now Jacob in chapter 28 the Bible says he lay down in laws and he slept and whilst he slept he had a vision and there was a ladder that connected the heavens and the earth angels ascending and descending but he was not discerning and when he got up he said the lord was in this place and i knew not even though he acknowledged that this was the gate of heaven may that not be your experience you will be discerning and you will receive that which is yours in the name of jesus so there are forces that control the opening and the closing of doors when doors are closed they do not close themselves they are closed as a result of certain forces when doors are open they do not open of themselves they are engaged by the use of these forces now generally speaking i'm not taking it from that dimension but according to scripture classically speaking doors open based on um three agencies number one doors open by the use of correct keys this is the first way we open doors the use of the right key the bible clearly tells us that we can have access to what he calls the keys of the kingdom and that by these keys we can use to open doors even from a natural sense when you can have a bunch of keys and just because you have keys it does not mean it to open every door you have to search for the right key and then to know how to operate that key correctly there are keys that you will turn twice three times you may turn only once and the door you are using the right key and yet the door does not open number two the bible teaches us that the second way that doors open classically speaking is by knocking it says when you knock the door will open and then number three the bible teaches us that the third way that doors can open is through the use of force in this case 
you are not just trying to turn the knob you can bring down the door completely are we together now but for the sake of our discussion tonight i want to organize a few things so that i can structure my discourse number one the first force that is responsible that controls open doors i wrote here is the force of light please write it down i'm giving you four of them tonight the first force that is responsible that controls the opening of doors is the force of light you can put in bracket knowledge please write and look up light in this kingdom is the master of dominion dominion in the kingdom is predicated upon the extent of illumination that you have in john chapter 1 and verse 5 the bible says the light shineth in darkness am i right on that it says and the darkness comprehended it not so we rise in this kingdom based on the kind and the quality of light that we have access to isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says arise it says shine for your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you i will always like to quote this using amplified it says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you it says rise to a new life it takes more than a willing heart it takes more than a good intention to rise you rise by light let me show you a scripture in genesis chapter 19 genesis 19 please give us from verse 10 and 11 this was the story of lot in sodom and gomorrah remember judgment had been pronounced over sodom and gomorrah but abraham now negotiated with god for the exemption of his cousin lot and the family are we together now two angels come to secure that deal and the moment they appeared and the people in the land saw them they desired to have the men to themselves and lord went as far as saying listen i have two young daughters i can give them to you do as you please but honor these messengers and the people said no we desire this angel so when we get to verse 10 now the angels were angry and the bible says the men put forth their hand and they pulled lot into the house watch this and shot who shot the door not the devil the angels shut the door verse 11 now watch what happened and they smote the men that were at the door of the house with another word darkness they were standing in front of the door but the angels knew that provided there was light i hope you know light is the union between sight is the union between your eyes and light not your eyes alone your eyes in darkness is equal to blindness you can have a healthy eye but if you are in a room that is pitch black you are still you are still uh, blind so it is not a healthy eye that equals sight it is a union of a healthy eyes and light watch what the angel did to limit these people's access to the door the force of light he struck them with blindness both small and great watch this the bible says so that they wearied themselves to find the door they were right in front of a door but they could not open it because of the bankruptcy of light it is amazing how you can be close to prophecy you can be close to your testimony but because you have not sustained the requisite dimension of light you can stand in front of a door that has the potential to be opened for many years is someone learning the force of light there are two reasons according to scripture jesus wept the first was in John chapter 11 and verse 35. He wept when he stood in front of Lazarus's tomb. The Bible says Jesus wept. And the disciples responded and they said, oh, how he loved him. So he wept as a, an expression of compassion towards Lazarus. The second time Jesus would weep was over the ignorance of the people. He looked towards Jerusalem and he began to weep. And he said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if you had known, even in this your time, the things that pertain unto your peace, he says but now they are hidden from your eyes jesus wept over the ignorance of the people are we still together now yes listen 
there is no possibility for advancement constructive advancement for the believer who remains in darkness in fact the assignment of the god of this world is to blind the minds of god's people he stops you from walking in the reality of the zoe experience by blinding your mind ephesians 4 and verse 18 having their understanding darkened the bible says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance so there is a relationship between ignorance and darkness you must contend for light light talks about the revelation knowledge of the word of god paul was praying over the church in ephesus ephesians chapter 1 when you begin to read from verse 15 down to 19 he was praying he said when i heard of your faith in the lord jesus christ and your love for the saints the next verse says that i cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers what's the content of the prayer that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the next verse says the eyes of your understanding being enlightened amplified says flooded with light flooded with light someone say light one more time say light so the first force that controls the possibility for open doors in the life of the believer is the force of light ignorance is dangerous ignorance can alienate you from the potential of the life of god that you already have being saved being born again does not mean you will manifest the reality of the life that is in christ walking in the reality of the zoe life i repeat is knowledge dependent knowledge dependent knowledge dependent knowledge dependent grace and peace he says be multiplied unto you through the knowledge not through assumption when god wants to show mercy upon a man he grants you access accelerated access to light hallelujah are we learning number two very quickly for sake of time the second force that is responsible for the opening of closed doors is the force of prayer the force of prayer please give us Acts chapter 12 from 2 very interesting rendition the Bible says now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church and he killed James the brother of John with the sword verse 3 it says and because he saw that it pleased the Jews he proceeded further this is a powerful revelation every time the devil attacks you and you do not respond he will proceed further he tested one person and watched the reaction when he saw that there was no reaction the bible said he proceeded touched your health a bit and watched the reaction you were careless and just made it a sociological issue and he proceeded further he proceeded further to take peter also then were the days of the unliving bread and when he had apprehended him watch this he put him in prison number one and then delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers can you imagine to keep him intending after easter to bring him forth to the people hallelujah peter was kept in prison let's read the remaining part one to read but prayer was made without season of the church unto god for him the church said no we kept quiet and james just went like that this time around we understand we may not have the keys to the prison we may not have influence to convince herod but there is a technology in the spirit that right from where you are it can open doors miles and kilometers away the bible says but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto god for him what happened six watch what began to happen now in response to prayer when herod would have brought him forth the same night peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door that kept the prison behold the angel of the lord came unto him that means that angel could still come in the time of james 
the angel was helpless because the prayer of the saints that would give him entrance to the earth realm was not there the angel did not just choose to come with peter if they kept quiet peter would have died like james and he smote peter by the side and raised him up saying arise up quickly watch this and the chains fell off from his hands and the angel said to him guard thyself and bind thy sandals and so he did and he said unto him cast thy garment and follow me watch open doors now and he went out and followed him and which not that it was true which was done by the angel and thought he was seeing a vision verse 10 it says and when they had passed the first ward or the first door and the second door watch doors opening because people were praying while they were praying doors were opening the bible says they now came to a mysterious door called the iron gate this is the gate that controls influence when that gate is open the only thing you see is the city there are many people who have been locked there are certain doors that have been opened but the door that controls influence is yet to be opened the iron gate that leads to the city there are gates that lead to other doors but there are doors that lead to the city it is not a road that leads to the city there are spiritual doors and if you do not have the technology to open them you will be surprised that you are in a city and yet the city does not acknowledge your presence nor will they place a demand upon the grace of God that is on your life this is true the iron gate that opens to the city is someone learning so prayer is very powerful it is able to open doors acts chapter 16 from verse 25 the context there was the deliverance of the young damsel who had been plagued with the spirit of divination as a result of that the disciples found themselves in prison and the bible says and at midnight watch this paul and silas it never said they complained it never said they, they blame god we were preaching and found ourselves here complaining will only prolong pain the bible says and at midnight paul and silas prayed say prayed and then they sang praises unto god it was so loud the prisoners heard them next verse suddenly suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prisons were open read the remaining part if you are a christian and immediately how many doors how many doors there is a mystery that can open many doors and there is a mystery that can open all doors when your prayer is combined with praise when in acts listen when it was with james the bible does not say they praised they prayed so an angel came took out time to walk him slowly but this time around the bible says they prayed and they praised and there was an earthquake we do not see the mention of an angel but we see that the foundation was shaken and all doors and all doors opened immediately so do not be surprised that tomorrow by this time you return to church and doors doors all doors open financial doors supernatural doors yes sir these are not parables except if you are not a christian listen the bible says the things that are written are for time it says they are for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope Do you believe this that all doors can open that someone can be in church right now whilst you are seated absorbing this mystery soaking in the glory strategic doors can be open open supernaturally all doors open. it is not always that you need a key a key is wonderful but there are times that you can leave the keyhole there and remove the door from its foundation so that your children can pass if you use a key sometimes it can be locked behind you again the moment you switch to the prayer mode this is beyond the realm of keys this one is the foundation this spirit of poverty 
that has recycled across families that will not allow doors to be open that in the place of prayer a man can hold on to the horns of the altar to pray and praise and pray and praise and pray and praise and the bible says the foundation prayer visits foundation it does not just manage the situation prayer goes to the root of the issues is someone learning one pray in the spirit in one minute the force of prayer rattling the foundation of closed doors swinging all doors open swinging all doors open hallelujah please be seated are we making progress tonight please make a covenant with yourself that tonight's sermon will not just be a nice sermon that you nod your head and say wow get angry in your spirit and whilst you are sitting right now just just i want you to be looking at the various doors whose expiry time has come and whilst you are seated remember what i told you doors can open and doors can close the condition for opening the doors is what i'm handing to you prayer can open doors prayer can open doors believe me prayer can open doors doors of mediocrity that no one has risen in your family it looks like there are horns according to Zechariah 1 18 it says son of man what seest thou and he said four horns these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah against Israel and against Jerusalem so that no man don't lift up his head you can pray and rattle to that foundation hallelujah when jesus showed up and the disciples were inviting themselves to meet him there was a particular disciple that made a comment and jesus credited to that person and said he was an israelite indeed in whom there was no guile the name of that individual is nathaniel when nathaniel was told to come and meet jesus he inquired you said that man is a Nazarene? Forget it. I will not waste my time. He said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Don't blame the man. Find out the Nazarenes in the Bible and see that they do not have a longevity component to anything. Whether it is Samson or whoever it is, there is no longevity. If they rise, they don't last. So Nathaniel said, before you waste your time, there is an antecedence. You see that if this man is a Nazarene, he's a victim of that which is consistent with his ancestry. He will not last. He will only be a fly by night and die for nothing. And so he said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Jesus did not say you are lying. He did not know that before Jesus would start his ministry, he went to the wilderness. Even though he had been ordained by John, he was full of the spirit but no power. The Bible says he went and he prayed for 40 days, 40 nights fasting. When he was done, he returned in the power of the spirit and his fame spread abroad. Nazarene or no Nazarene, you can rewrite the narrative. Prayer gives you the option. Listen, prayer is an equalizer of destinies. Regardless the disadvantage that has come by reason of your lineage, bloodline or ancestry, prayer gives you the authorization by God. Power with God. And you negotiate the matters of destiny. You don't sit down and allow destiny decide it, its woes and give it to you. No! I must participate in the matters that define my destiny prayer gives me that allowance to represent my interest before the throne of god 
he said what things soever ye desire mark eleven twenty four. 24 it says when ye pray not when ye discuss when ye pray he said believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them this is the confidence the bible says that we have in him that when we ask anything according to his will he heareth us is that in your bible say i will pray shout it say i will pray in the name of jesus i shake away prayerlessness i shake away spiritual laxity the spirit that has planted excuses as far as mastering the art of holding on to the horns of the altar on you rewrites the narratives in your life listen there are people who may not be serious praying because they have the leverage of covenants they come from a family of missionaries whose parents have supported the work of god and before a missionary died he left a prophecy that is still alive roaming around a stubborn child and yet programming good things because covenants don't die they are only changed and rewritten they don't die and then here comes another person you are the first person to break forth and then you become careless and just sit down and don't say, well it doesn't matter i just know that one day one day go better no that's not the language of a champion listen for someone after this conference you need to take a day out and say i am tired write a list of some doors that must open place them on the ground and travel in the spirit in prayer and praise is someone learning There are spirits that control timing to impact based on whatever territory you come from. Maximum two years and your relevance diminishes. It looks like the spirit of the city. There are cities people travel to and no longer flourish. People who blossom and do well and they appear somewhere and they become victims of the territorial spirits within that place. Jesus did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that we are not alone in this side of his kingdom. And he said to not be ignorance of the devices, the word stratomai, the strategies of the devil. Man of God, you are a man of God here, yeah, please pray. End time ministry is not for jokers. If you want to expand, you must build capacity in the spirit. God will not trust you with the destiny of nations and generations except and unless you have stature and capacity in the spirit. Say, I will pray. One more time, let the devil hear you. Do you believe what you are hearing? You can pray your way out of any nonsense. I'm telling you, except you don't take it serious. You, I repeat, you can pray your way. Mm, you can pray your way, sir. Pray your way. This powerlessness. Things are not working. Someone promises to bless you and it's as if a spell is cast on his head. He looks at you and cannot remember again. Pray his remembrance of you. You can pray it again. Listen, please believe this. He said, after two days, this is your third anniversary. That means nobody should be down. It's the heritage of rising that after two days, he will revive us. But he said, on the third day. On the third day. On the third day. Let's finish up. Now, I want you to pay attention. The third force is a very powerful one. Listen to me. In all your getting, contend for this third force. It's called the force of favor. Please listen. Believe me with all humility, I know what I'm saying. I want you to pay attention on this one. Otherwise, you will suffer in this life as if the devil, as if God is not alive. I want you to, you, you need to understand the dynamics of favor and the power that they sustain to open doors. They can transform sit you to realms of possibilities they can give you access to men most of us here i submit to you that your prayer pot is favor dependent 
now i've had a lot of teachings about favor i don't talk up against people or whatever but i submit to you by the authority of scripture many teachings about favor are imbalanced and are inconsistent with the structure that god designed for administering favor is why we enjoy them and not walk in the reality of it let me share with you by grace a few thoughts on favor and I pray in the name of Jesus that when next we meet, you will come to your pastor and say, thank you, sir. Thank you for this night. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for bringing to end captivity of 30 years. The force of favor. To understand favor, there are a few things you need to know. Listen, you will not appreciate the, the, the teaching or the concept or the necessity for favor until you understand the following. Number one, that destiny fulfillment is time dependent. This is the first reason you need favor. Destiny fulfillment, your advancement and even producing results in your life is time dependent. That means you do not have all the time the, the time-dependent nature of destiny will necessitate favor as a system of advantage to accelerate you as far as your adventure on earth is concerned. If you are to do life from the natural sequence of things, time will cheat you. Listen carefully. The first reason why you need favor as a force that opens doors is the time-dependent reality of destiny. Is someone learning? Number two. Destiny fulfillment is not only time dependent, is men dependent. <laughs> Destiny fulfillment is men dependent. The fourth church, please listen, I speak to you by the Spirit. Destiny fulfillment, the opening of doors, transiting from one realm of impact to the other, is men dependent. Let me show you a scripture. For some of you, I will remind you of it. Psalm 115 and verse 16. Let's read together in concert when we find it. Ready? It's projected. One, two, read. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's. But the earth has he given to the children of men. Do you know what that means? That the, the custodians and the managers of this side of God's kingdom are men. This is a statement recognized by God. You may have heard me say that if God says yes and men say no, the yes will remain in the realm of the spirit while you wallow around as though the word of God were a lie. Even the manifestation of Jesus as the son of the living God, the prophetic speaking remain in the realm of the spirit until a human vessel partnered with him in the person of Mary. If Mary rejected that offer, the Holy Ghost will go around again looking for another virgin. Be it unto me. I choose to partner with heaven to make the word become flesh. Are we together? As powerful as Jesus was and is, he needed an encounter with three men for his destiny to open up. Number one, Simeon the prophet. Number two, Anna the prophetess. Number three, John the prophet that you call John the Baptist. Men dependent. Your Jesus walked under a closed heaven for 30 years till a man opened his heaven. Jesus, the son of the living God. There was no mention of the heavens open over him. There was no mention of the Holy Ghost coming upon him. In spite of his diligence, learning the law. Until he submitted to the ministry of a man. And the Bible says, and the heavens opened. many believers are ignorant as to the laws of the kingdom please i want you to listen very carefully is, is someone learning so the second reason why we need to study the subject of favor is that destiny fulfillment are men dependent the third the third reason why we need to activate favor as a force that opens doors in our lives is because the bible tells us without missing words that the whole world lies in wickedness under the siege of Satan. You find that in 1 John 5, 19. 1 John 5, 19. The Bible tells us that we know that we are of God and the whole world, the whole world, not Abuja, 
So you run to America, the statement is still true. Run to UK, it is still true. Run back to your village, it is still true. Run to your uncle's house, it is still true. That the whole world, the jurisdiction of evil is the whole world. The whole world lieth in wickedness. That means it is unnatural for a man to just like you and invest in your life. It is unnatural for a man to forget about his own destiny and invest his credibility, his resources, his endorsement. It is not natural with men. The whole world is in wickedness. When you find people dedicating their attention towards you, you must have outsourced an advantage. It's called favor. May that be someone's story. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Watch this. What is favor? Let me define in the simplest of terms. Favor according to scripture is to be given unusual kindness. Number two, to be given unusual access. Number three, to be given unusual acceptance. You have to understand this. These are the tripartite features of biblical favor. Unusual kindness, unusual access, unusual acceptance. There's no time I would have shown you from scripture that if these tripartite forces, watch this, do not exist in your life, you have something else, not favor. Unusual kindness, don't forget, unusual access and unusual acceptance. Kindness enough do, alone does not make it favor. Access alone does not make it favor. Acceptance alone does not make it favor. Another point to lovingly correct which I think has been a statement for a very long time in the body of Christ and I have observed with all honor and respect to the body of Christ is the concept of favor, generically speaking, being unmerited. It's not entirely true. Favor, like wisdom, is in dimensions. And there are certain dimensions, in fact, only one dimension of favor is credited to be unmerited. The favor that has to do with the administration of salvation. Every other dimension of favor can be engaged. Go to Proverbs 13, 15. And let's read what the Bible says. Let's read together if you're a Christian. One, two, read. Good understanding. One more time. Good understanding. One more time. It says, but the way of the transgressor, you know who the transgressor is? The consistent violator of an ordinance or a law. It says the way of the transgressor, even if a Christian is hard. Good understanding. There is a relationship between understanding and favor. Are we learning now? So because of these three reasons, we must open up ourselves to access favor. That number one, destiny actualization is time dependent. Number two, destiny fulfillment are men dependent. Number three, the reality of wickedness sweeping across the length and the breadth of the whole earth. So the force of favor. Let's look at two or three scriptures. Genesis chapter 39. If you're with me, please say amen. Genesis 39, we'll read the first four verses. Genesis 39. Let's see how this grace worked in the life of Joseph. The Bible says Joseph was brought down from Egypt. Remember the story? And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him of the hand, bought him of the hand of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down Tether too. It says, but the Lord, or and the Lord was with Joseph. Watch this. And he was a prosperous man, it says. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Watch the character of favor. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord had made all that he did to prosper in his hand. For, and Joseph found grace in his sight. And he served him. And he made him what? Overseer over his house unusual kindness unusual access unusual acceptance exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 very popular scripture on favor 3 21 
Exodus 3 21 it says and I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians you need to understand those who are about to favor them the same people who punished them and kept them in captivity for 430 years when it has to do with favor ladies and gentlemen God can use anybody 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 just because the person hated you yesterday does not mean the person cannot be used by God to bless you today and it shall come to pass that when ye go ye shall not go empty scripture number three on favor Ezra chapter 7 and verse 6 look at this Ezra chapter 7 verse 6 the Bible says and Ezra went up from Babylon and he was a ready scribe in the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given. Watch this. And the king granted him how many? How many? Unusual kindness, unusual access, unusual acceptance. The king granted him all his requests, but that request was granted not according to the wish of the king, according to the hand of the Lord his God that was upon him. That means the king was not himself. There was something on Joseph that was commanding a yes from the king. You would see the king saying yes to everything. It was not a generic reality. There were people hearing no every day. But because there was a grace upon Ezra, every time he spoke to the king, he was compelled by the influence of that favor to grant him all his requests. Are we learning? The force of light, the force of prayer, the force of favor. Whilst you are seated in one minute, if you can, please lay your hands on your head and begin to declare in the name that is above all names that favor begins to work on in your life. Favor begins to work in your life. In the name of Jesus, access to unusual kindness. Someone pray. Access to unusual acceptance access to unusual kindness from all and sundry open your mouth and pray to the end that all closed doors be open to the end that all closed doors be open lord send help from zion let it come as favor in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ let me give you the fourth force is someone learning tonight the fourth force that controls the opening of closed doors in the life and the destinies of believers is the force of prophecy the power and the mystery of the prophetic lend me your attention now please the force of prophecy hosea chapter 12 and verse 13 Hosea 12 13 here's what it says and by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt he brought them out of Egypt brought them out of Egypt and by a prophet was he preserved in Exodus chapter 14 when you begin your reading from verse 13 we'll jump for sake of time let's do 13 to 18 then we'll jump a few other verses follow the story carefully this is the nation of israel standing before the red sea watch what prophet moses was doing as a leader and a prophet moses said unto the people fear not stand still and see the salvation of the lord which he will show to you today somebody say today i like it he didn't say which he will show to you any day today for the Egyptians whom ye have seen today is shall see them again no more forever. The next verse, God will fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. Verse 15, Moses now comes and cries to the Lord and the Lord said, speak unto the children of Israel. What did he say to tell them? Speak. He didn't say push them. Speak. The, their motion, the ability to move that door called the Red Sea is hidden in your prophecy it is amazing that you can do many things with that same mouth you can lament or you can speak prophetically 
tell them that they go forward that means they will go the direction of your prophecy if you say stay there an influence will come from your word and keep them to remain there he said they are standing in front of the sea it is not the power of the sea that may move forward. it is the power of the prophetic tell the people that in spite of that door that is closed they can still move forward verse 16 it says but lift up now thy rod and stretch out thy hand over the sea to divide it can you imagine you see, when god talks to men he doesn't talk to men like he's talking to men he talks to men like he's discussing with himself so you you need faith to walk with god because god will tell you a lot of things that will disturb you and he will act as if he's not aware that that statement is troubling you you can be discussing you can you can go to his presence with a backload of, of debts, a rent issue, and God is already telling you, you know, there are 500 people whose school fees we need to pay, and He will not even talk about the rent issue because it is His character to call the things that be not as though they were. You must learn the economy of God when you approach His presence, like they train you to get to the Buckingham Palace. There are things that, even if it were not natural with you, you are forced to do it because of the atmosphere you have entered. You must understand the protocol of the speakings of God he will not come and speak with you like he's speaking to a man because you were created in his image he will be agreeing with Satan if he spoke to you like a fallen man so he speaks to you like he's speaking to himself even if you are Gideon he will not call you the weak one he will call you oh thou mighty man of valor is someone learning the prophetic is very powerful we are products of prophecy now let's read on to 18 verse 17 now watch this and behold i will harden the hearts of the egyptians and they shall follow them and i will get me honor upon pharaoh and upon his host upon the chariots and upon the horsemen verse 18 it says and the egyptians shall know that i am the lord when i have gotten me honor upon pharaoh upon his chariots and upon his horsemen please jump to verse 26 same chapter for sake of time jump to 26 watch this and the lord said to moses you are a prophet over the people don't leave them in that calamity stretch out thy hand over the sea so that the waters now they had walked on dry ground are we together now and the egyptians were following them did you see that that sea was not just a sea it was a door because when it opened it was dry i told you doors can be circumstances doors can be human entities and doors can be spirits you will stand in front of a wall and be deceived thinking is a wall until you start prophesying you will see that wall break into two and open hither and tither and watch this the same technology that opens doors is the same technology that can close doors if that door remain open now you will learn that there are closed doors that god himself closes this door now had been opened the implication of that indefinite opening is that the egyptians were also coming when the nation of israel got to the other side the lord now is about to close that door watch this and the lord says to moses stretch forth your hand and he stretched forth his hand to the sea and the bible says the sea returned to its strength when the morning appeared and the egyptians fled against it and the lord overthrew the egyptians hallelujah in the midst of the sea 28 and the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of pharaoh that came into the sea after them and there remained not so much as one of them we're reading to the last verse it says but the children of israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea and the waters were a wall on them on their right side and on their left 30 thus the lord saved israel that day out of the hand of the egyptians and israel saw the egyptians dead upon the seashore the last verse and israel saw the great work which the lord did upon the egyptians the bible ends by saying here and the people feared the lord and believed the lord and also his servant moses listen 
every time I teach on the prophetic I'm very quick to observe sadly that because of the current context of the church and God is helping us there have been all kinds of abuses unfortunately and sadly around the prophetic because of the mismanagement of that office that gift and that ministry um it has it has brought a lot of devaluation to the power the potential and the extent even the role that the prophetic has to play in the life of people make no mistakes about it ladies and gentlemen whilst on one hand we admit that there is a lot that needs to be corrected as far as the prophetic extending to the apostle is concerned but you will be making a big mistake to throw the baby and the bath water because destinies are made by prophecy listen carefully if jesus needed three prophets for his destiny to stabilize three three for redemption to happen simeon the prophet anna the prophetess john the baptist it took the ministry of three prophets to open up his heavens there are limitations that many people face in life watch this in ministry and in destiny there are certain doors that stand before you that you may not have the level of spiritual intelligence the level of prayer intelligence to be able to push those doors open that is the reason why God sends prophets watch this now he sends men and women that he has anointed by the election of grace alongside the sacrifice of alignment and he has put grace and power upon their lips they can speak to certain doors even ancient doors and tell them lift up your heads O ye gates and be ye lifted ye ancient doors the king of glory wants to come in and he says those doors be open and the door said who is this king of glory and he says the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle your destiny can be stagnated indefinitely regardless your education regardless the people you know regardless the advantage that you have within a territory this is where the assignment of the prophetic comes the assignment of the prophetic is to bring restoration one time the sons of elijah they were undergoing mentorship and then they needed to go to the other side they said where we meet with you is too straight and while they were cutting the wood the bible says one of them who borrowed an axe the head fell in the sea and he shouted and he said alas master for it was borrowed if that guy tried to get into that water he would have drowned and died for nothing the place is why i'm here where fell it let me know where it and the bible says when he threw a stick there the axe head began to float is that in your bible when there was an economic situation of national magnitude it took more than economists to come and solve the problem in a land called Samaria exempted from it the king and the prophet the prophet comes to Samaria and sees that women the king watch what was happening that women were boiling their children and eating you can imagine that level of hardship at least abraham wanted to kill isaac he didn't kill him but this one the women did not even tell the children they would die they just boiled them and ate them are we together yes and at that time the prophet came by the spirit he did not speak over a person he did not speak over a church he spoke over nations there are there are cadres in the prophetic there are graces that are only allotted to speak to individuals there are graces that are allotted to speak to predefined territories but like jeremiah there are graces that grants you authority over nations to root out to pull down to build to plant hallelujah and he spoke over samaria and said by this time tomorrow now i don't know whether the prophet believed his statement himself that was a very serious risk and when he made that statement 
one of the advisors and the aides of the king said you are a foolish man even if God will open the windows of heaven would this happen and he said you see you are you are about to taste will see but you will not partake of it watch what began to happen the Bible says there were four lepers oh I like this four lepers incapacitated but the spirit of prophecy started moving around to find actors when God speaks don't there are too many men on earth everybody will not tell God no if your uncle was to be used and he says no the spirit of prophecy is intelligent enough to go even to America and raise a help and bring for you listen listen we are not teaching on the prophetic number you must understand the character of the prophetic when God speaks usually as far as the creative dimension of the prophetic is concerned no name is mentioned except in a few cases do you know why because God respects the will of men if I prophesy and I say this man on suit is going to help this man I have limited the operation of that prophecy but if I say in the name of Jesus Christ I make declarations that help comes to you from Zion God can come to this man and he can say I'm not interested God will respect his will it, the spirit of God is patient to vet the heart of everybody till he finds a willing heart the Bible says how forcible are right words when the prophetic leaves is like an arrow I hope you know every word that comes from God moves like a messenger and it must return and tell him i finished what i've done that means if the word god said has not returned it means he's still working there he is still moving around maybe he tried abuja and it did not work by now it's gotten to potakot or to to kano it does not matter where to fish help from four lepers because the prophet of god spoke hold on did you know that the guys who gave up their food always had it did you know that the lepers were always there what then was the difference the activator of that possibility was a prophetic four lepers sat down and they did not even know what started moving there they said why sit we here till we die why didn't they think about it two weeks before no the same way the helper of your destiny now says is a long time i called this man no he did not just think i'm telling you there is a spirit that moves upon men and begins to compel them lion of judah the lamb upon the throne we hail you most high you're the Lion of Judah, the Lamb upon the throne, we hail you most high. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. When God wants to show a man mercy, these are the forces that God releases to your direction. When God looks at your life and finds you lamenting and crying and say, Lord, when will this door open? Get ready. The force of light comes and i will give you pastors according to my heart jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 the assignment of the pastoral ministry is to expose you to light that means if you don't come to church you are participating with your woe and your tragedy he said when i came into the house of the lord then understood i there is a realm of understanding that resides within the corporate gathering of the saints they shall feed you with knowledge and understanding acts chapter 20 and verse 20 please give it to us what's the assignment of a good shepherd and how that i kept back nothing that was profitable unto you i showed you all things and i've taught you publicly that is the assignment listen pastors are light bearers they communicate light dimension after dimension line upon line precept upon precept then the force of prayer energized by the power of light you stretch in the spirit I was very humbled last year that this church went through for almost half that year 
I mean you can imagine the kind of stamina it would have taken even if you are playing not for six months something has to land upon you the spirit of prayer and supplication is transferable yes sir one of the ways that you receive is to be in company of them that have it are we together now yes the force of prayer and then the force of favor ah this one when it lands on your life it speaks immediately 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 I don't know who I'm speaking to immediately that the force of faith is able to come upon him and rewrite a new narrative over your life after circles of tragedy tragedy apostle i've been in abuja for many years i love the lord sincerely but this door has refused to open you need the force of favor in luke chapter 2 1 verse 52 the bible speaking about jesus your jesus luke 2 52 and jesus increased in wisdom is that in your bible in stature and even jesus himself needed to increase in favor with god and with men if jesus did not have favor and he sent someone to go to a place where the street divide and use a donkey you don't take that kind of this country to ascertain that that grace is upon your life there are parts you do not dare if you are not sure of the manifestation of favor and then the force of the prophetic ladies and gentlemen we are products of the prophetic god has helped us to know him and to love him but i can tell you we have voices who told you prophecies are just mere words who told you there is no throne that backs the speakings of God's people just because there are jokers do not mix everybody and no there are men who have a covenant with God little children have you any catch John 21 he said none he said cast your net to the right side he was not Could not catch fish they could not find there are times you need to move beyond you can be a skilled fisherman there are times you can have the right tools your net still you will not catch fish at that point you don't need fishing you need the prophetic word from god Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Feel this place Salaba Shalakosiata and all doors open and all doors open immediately all doors opened listen in the next five minutes i want you to give your destiny 
dedicated moments of serious prayer we are going to take some time to pray and that prayer you are going to engage with understanding there are certain doors it's time to rattle them to the foundation the prophetic is coming your way the release of favor is coming your way but for god's sake someone find a corner let your destiny know you mean business and i like you to begin to invest in prayer for the next five minutes is someone pray Someone is praying. Shaleka parakato safra gede belekosia. Sabrandos kalibrados. Someone pray. Hallelujah. Play the strings for me. Haya, haya, you will never be the same you've touched this grace your life will change you will never be the same you've touched this grace your life is changed you will never be the same you've touched this grace your life must change you will never be the same you've touched this grace your life must change 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 keep praying in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I want you to mention every door by name that needs and must be open in this conference financial doors doors of fruitfulness call it by name and declare the season has come that you must open lift your voice and begin to declare lift your voice doors of influence someone is praying doors of divine health doors to your next season someone pray someone pray pray Someone is praying. Be open. Be open. Be open. A 
hallelujah now please i want you to listen i want you to listen please be very sensitive listen you see ladies and gentlemen every time we gather like this it's important for us to be able to discern the things that happen in an atmosphere like this number one an atmosphere like this is an atmosphere for encounters an encounter is a supernatural activity that furnishes the reality of a truth a thought or a dimension to your spirit number two transformation transformation is a change of state something happens to your mind and now your mind is in a better position to partner with the holy spirit to birth and to produce possibilities in your life but number three every time we gather like this the holy spirit has covenanted based on his job description to the saints as revealed by jesus that every time the holy spirit shows up his assignment is to glorify jesus in all its ramifications we together and one of the ways that jesus christ is glorified especially his resurrection is the manifestation of great power in acts chapter 4 and verse 33 the bible says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection you do not give witness of the resurrection just with discussions it says with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus and great grace was upon them all one of the major things that i believe has been ordained by god to happen in this conference is impartation let me explain to you for one minute what impartation is impartation is beyond falling down and standing up or lifting hands to shout amen those things are just byproducts of impartation the essence of impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities from careers to those who need them and there are two ways listen carefully the anointing of the Holy Spirit is the principal agency that sponsors possibilities in this kingdom. The assignment of faith is to transport you to the point where you connect to the power of God. Once you connect to the power of God, the assignment of faith is over. It is like a host. Are we together now? From your farm to the top. It is not the host that feeds your plant, but not connecting it. The assignment of faith is to connect you from the place of the problem. To the place of god's power so no matter how long the distance that is how your faith must elongate to get you but once you connect to the power of god the very agency responsible for the possibilities is the power of god are we together now this is very important and there are two principal ways to access power in this kingdom number one is directly from god through encounters that a man can encounter the God of the Bible and among the many things that happen in that place of intimacy and encounter is a transmission of power from his majesty to you why because you are a spirit so at that point of spirit communication it is possible for spirit to spirit based on the law of deep calling on to deep you can receive a transmission of power the energizing of the spirit number two which is a more generic way is through impartation impartation from men and women who have been privileged by god to carry and host certain dimensions of spiritual possibilities he said i long to see you that i may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established hallelujah the Bible says he sent a word to Jacob. The effect of that word was that it lighted upon Israel. Listen to me. God hides his power in men. Not in oil. Not in bottles and handkerchiefs. Those things are only mediums. But the principal tool, the power of God, 
the presence of the Holy Spirit within men God hides his possibilities in men no wonder the psalmist said what is man that thou art mindful of not the son of man that thou visitest him you have made him a little lower than Elohim you have crowned him with glory set him above the works of your hand and that in doing so you did not leave anything that was not under his feet men are mysterious entities they are not just bodies with hands feet and eyes with the ability to speak men are storehouses of divine possibilities god hides his possibilities in men so when god wants to help you among the many ways he shows you mercy is to introduce a man O widow of zarafat you will remain crying there until a man a mysterious man called um elijah are we together now shows up and shows you mercy shunammite woman you may have influence with everybody around shunem but if you cannot encounter elisha you will not have a baby abraham it is true that the covenant is upon you that the whole earth will be willed to you as the god of abraham when you become the abraham of god but listen very carefully if you do not meet melchizedek that prophecy remains barren for he met this strange man called melchizedek the king of an ancient city called salem and he blessed him and said blessed be abraham possessor of the heavens and the earth what kind of a blessing is that apostle paul you would be writing to thirds of the new testament i know but you ignore ananias and watch yourself remain blind he said go to the, the street called straight and go to the house of one uh, judah or so and and you will meet a man there he's already praying and he has seen in a vision and he came and said brother saul god jesus whom you saw has sent me to you that i may open your eyes and that you might be filled with the spirit he can dare to say i thank my god i pray in tongues more than ye all but it took a man that the bible did not say much about again i am victorious i have overcome i am victorious I have overcome I am victorious I have overcome I am victorious Listen, I think I've said it here the last time I came to this church. We're wrapping up. The Bible says, Thou anointest my head with oil but the result of what is on my head was seen in my cup he does not anoint the cup if the cup is empty do not blame the cup the cup is a report card revealing what is on your head or otherwise when god wants to remedy the condition of your cup he looks for your head it is not the cup the cup is always a reflection of your head it is not the job no it is not the business it is not the limitation in progress those are physical expressions they are symptoms when you meet a consultant a doctor as he consults for you while you are mentioning symptoms he has been trained to use symptoms as a pointer to tell you what is really wrong i'm having headache runny stomach i'm shivering my joints are paining me and he's he's using the symptoms but he's helping him to arrive at something and he will tell you i'm not here to solve the problem of headache joint pain there is a central problem that when i solve those symptoms will begin to disappear the financial limitation the disfavor 
that people come into your life and the lifespan of their relevance is two weeks and something takes them away it's not about the scenario of anger or pain or neglect it is that there is a bankruptcy of a kind of grace there is a grace that you have not received so your cock keeps reporting to you upgrade something upon your head thou anointest my head with oil my cup run it over thou anointed my ministry but it will not come on the ministry it will come on your head and then you will see the result apostle where are my helpers they are always there but it, there, there is a sound that an anointing on your head is supposed to produce from the realm of the spirit they were designed to respond to that sound and because there is a bankruptcy of that anointing that oil it said i have found david my servant and with my holy oil have i anointed him give it to us that should be psalm 89 and verse 20 i have found david he says my servant and with my holy oil have i anointed him reading to 24 verse 2 it says with whom my hand shall be established my arm also shall strengthen him it says the enemy by reason of that anointing shall not exact upon him nor the son of wickedness afflict him it says i will beat his foes before his face and plague them that hate him but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his horn be exalted i'm a product of many anointings many speakings your pastor is a product of many graces there are possibilities that you cannot produce by luck those results are a testament that there is there is a coordinated influence from the spirit that is controlling the outcome and the possibilities of your life please listen to me there are more than enough people in your city and in this place who can hold your hands and act as doors to transit you midwife your rising hallelujah listen very carefully there is a certain grace that if you do not have you may fall prey to the tragedy of the man we call Mephibosheth you see Mephibosheth was not a bad man he only was unfortunate with the midwife who helped him midwives are those who act as doors and take us from where we are to where we need to be and if your midwife has not been prepared by God Mephibosheth you can become crippled even though you will later find yourself in the palace but it will not give you the agency work Mephibosheth's tragedy was the product of the poor ministry of a midwife. I don't know the midwife who has been sent in this year of open doors. It is your responsibility to access the grace that straightens them. The ministry of a midwife is very delicate. You can lose your mobility for life because of the carelessness of a midwife. The name of the midwife that crippled Mephibosheth was not mentioned but we know that a man who had a great destiny became crippled i don't know what prayer mephibosheth prayed but one day when the grace for favor was going to locate him david said is there any man in the house of saul that i may show kindness for jonathan's sake and they brought a man called ziba and the bible says he had 15 sons and they sent him to a place called lodeba to go and fetch this crippled man called mephibosheth brought him to the palace and the king said ziba your children will farm for this man but as for him you will remain in the palace what a pleasant manifestation of favor yet he never walked till he died listen to me there are men and women who have been called by god joseph you have the ability to interpret dreams but if the wine presser is careless he can add two years to your stay in the prison the carelessness of one man memory loss do not announce you before your destiny helper a man's stay was prolonged by two years because someone forgot no wonder there is a mystery in the spirit called the book of remembrance the bible says that night could not a hazard or sleep and he said bring me the chronicles and when they opened it he saw that mordecai had saved the life of the king but he had not been rewarded 
I don't know who. There are people here. You have been part of the rising of many. God has used you to open the way for many, but you have been forgotten. Tonight, prophetically, may God open the book of remembrance in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Let the book of remembrance, I say, be open. Be open over you in the name of Jesus Christ. For the sake of time, let me speak over your life. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, I worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, I worship you. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will hear. Oh, speak from the throne and I'll hear from the earth. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will hear. From my altar is calling you, oh God. My worship is calling you, oh God. My sacrifice is calling you, oh God. Take my praise, oh God. Take my praise. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. For as many who are tired of certain realms, you have told yourself it's time to go forward. He said, ye have compassed this mountain long enough. Hogenedo Do 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 Genedo Yeah Hogenedo Do 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 Hogenedo standing in faith with the grace upon the man of God and I want to speak and declare the opening of certain doors I want you to believe it you will be surprised you will marvel and wonder at what begins to happen to you listen this that you see is an election of grace is the mercy of God but once he grants that grace, it is for the profiting of the body. There are people here, I believe that God sent us in this conference and burdened his servant to make for this convergence because someone you have prayed and you have fasted, you have said, there has to be a way. Lord, let my life glorify you. Let something about the opening of doors. Even for Lazarus, his grave was opened again. It is never too late as far as the opening of doors is concerned. The Bible says in one synoptic account that on that glorious morning, an angel came from heaven and rolled away the stone and sat on it, ready for his majesty to come out. So in, in declaring open doors, it is also a declaration of resurrection. Because there are times that because of how long the door had been closed, whatever was inside would have died. He said, after three days, by now he stinketh. There is no point opening the door. The help you are looking for, the time has gone. It has died already. 
when we declare open doors we also declare resurrection because even if you roll away the stone Lazarus is already dead there are times you need to roll away the stone and then make declarations and say Lazarus like he spoke to the 12 year old girl Talita Kumi little girl I say unto you arise can I pray for you I want to release a grace for speed this is the first grace that I sense in my spirit and we're going to do a quick walk just let me five minutes there are people here who must carry that grace bodily I told you that life and destiny is time dependent some of you the truth is that time has already gone against you uh, this is not negative confession time has gone against you I'm about to pray please those that the power of God comes upon I want you to bring them out very quickly let's make this fast so in about five minutes we are done it's an impartation of the grace for speed and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran the Bible says and overtook the chariots of Ahab even down to Israel I stretch my hand I'm seeing many people but particularly there is a gentleman that I'm seeing in my vision and this one has been an age-long stagnation right now I'm just seeing fire coming on that person please when i pray whether you are an usher or not do well to help those under the anointing to come so that we'll make it very very fast father in the name of jesus i release that grace right now receive that grace for speed receive that grace for speed receive that receive that grace for speed, grace for speed in the name of jesus christ there are many people but there is a gentleman that i'm seeing i i just saw light and fire i saw the image of a gentleman that anointing is coming on a gentleman you need to move please bring them to the front very quickly in the name of jesus i pray over that gentleman wherever you are by the power of god may that grace rest upon you i command speed upon your life speed upon your life help them speed upon your life in the name of jesus christ now hear me i'm seeing a vision right now and i just saw like a scroll pastor i just saw part of it one side of it just opened i told you about the book of remembrance i have seen this in my visions ultimately we believe it because it's written in scripture i'm seeing the number four there are people here right now that grace is coming on you and people who have forgotten you things you have done that may not even be remembered i stretch my hands i don't know who that grace needs to come upon receive that anointing right now let the book of remembrance be open the fourth church let the book of remembrance be open let it be open right now let it be open right now in the name of jesus christ let that grace be open let that let that book be open please bring them quickly let's save time in the name that is above all names i'm seeing the hands of two people burning and the lord is telling me that your hand is a symbol of your productivity and it looks like your hand has been tied you know that's what happened to samson way before his eyes were bound the devil tried his hands before he tried his eyes i don't know who that is but god is about to lose your hands right now in the name of jesus may that fire from the throne right now let it rest upon your hands 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 in the name of jesus christ i'm doing an impartation but i'm seeing that the lord is touching someone's mother this is someone's mother i'm seeing the power of god come upon you this is the power of witchcraft that has brought mama to a state of ill health i don't know who that person is but the lord is revealing to me that he is bringing life he's bringing healing to your mother i stretch my hands towards you right now may that anointing rest upon you let that anointing rest upon you let that anointing rest upon you in the name of jesus christ do you believe in the favor of god please do 
please do bring for me the lady right now i'm seeing a lady the power of god is coming upon her right now as i'm speaking i just mentioned favor and i just saw light just leave me and rest on a lady i'm going to pray for everybody but i just saw that grace because it's a new season a very strange manifestation of the spirit of favor is like a mantle a cloak from heaven that is going to rest upon you and you will start finding out that people you you may not even begin to describe the things that start happening to you please bring that it's a lady one person and then i'll pray and speak over everyone in the name that is above all names may that grace that 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 engracing for favor let it rest upon you now i want to speak over everyone please bring them Ah, my head you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn and I am anointed with fresh oil my head you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn I am anointed with fresh oil I am anointed with fresh oil in the name of Jesus Christ the grace that makes for favor compelling men I'm this one is really coming on many people the grace for favor that compels men and compels systems to respond to you favorably in the name of Jesus Christ receive that grace right now 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 right where you are receive that grace right now from today begin to walk in favor supernatural dimensions of favor I declare over you in the name of Jesus and hear me every force of witchcraft that has attempted to tie anyone's life down and commanded closed doors so that these doors would not open you have stand you, you you've stood in front of those doors and yet they have refused to open I speak to those doors now by the power of the prophetic every ancient door in the name of Jesus, a father be open. A father be open. I command that the doors parts hither and thither. In the name of Jesus Christ, financial doors be open now. Doors of fruitfulness be open now. Doors of new dimensions. You're a man of God here. New prophetic dimensions. New apostolic dimensions. I open those doors in the name of Jesus. Hear me. And for everything that has died. Or is dying in your life. Jesus said roll away the stone. The opening of that door meant the possibility for resurrection. Therefore I declare. Everything that has died. Hear ye the word of the Lord let it come back to life now dead dreams and visions come back to life now dead relationships come back to life now dead opportunities come back to life now hear me god is a restorer there are two systems of advantage that help the saints to manifest dominion over destiny and time number one is restoration number two is speed these are the forces that have been allocated to help men gain time when time is against you these are the forces that are released in the spirit the force of restoration and the force of speed i want to declare restoration because you see you can receive restoration of time and I will restore the years and you can restore things in the name of Jesus Christ everything that has left your life that should not have left I stand joining faith with the man of God the angel over this house 
I command between now and the end of March in the name of Jesus let there be a sudden restoration sudden restoration sudden restoration hallelujah for all of you who are out here in the name that is above all names these engracings that you have received I prophesy upon you that they begin to speak immediately in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus now listen let me lend my voice finally with the man of God and speak over the fourth church Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14 Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14 and the elders of the Jews build it and the Bible says watch this it says they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo they build it but their prosperity dependent on the speakings of two prophets Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the prophet and the Bible says they build it and they finished it it's one thing to desire to start building it takes more than architectural prowess to build and finish the hand of Zerubbabel can begin but it takes another set of spiritual dynamics to have it completed and the Bible here says that when men build and prosper and finish is because while they are building there is the mysterious prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo I know that before this conference is ended the man of God will be speaking over your life but let me lend my voice as the second one by grace to make declarations over everyone but particularly the fourth church everything that is alive shows that is alive by growing therefore in the name of Jesus Christ the fourth church I stand by the prophetic and measure a thousand cubits and I declare rise to a new level rise to a new level rise to a new level in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare the Bible says and it was noised abroad that Jesus was in town the angels that herald the relevance of men wherever they are within Abuja and across this nation I decree and declare that all those who have been apportioned to stand by the man of God financially and otherwise to see that the work progresses unhindered we compel them by the power of prophecy in the name of Jesus they appear in this season the Bible says, and I will multiply them, they will not be few. That I will glorify them, they will not be small. I declare upon the church as a corporate people. In the name of Jesus, may the glory of God rest upon you. May the glory of God rest upon you. May the glory of God rest upon you. The sound of mourning, the sound of death, may it not be heard among God's people. In the name of Jesus. He said remember ye not the former things nor consider the things of old for behold i do a new thing i prophesy unto you be prepared for the new be prepared for the new even as by the spirit of god let me speak over your finances you see what is happening economically around and it's important the prophetic is also connected to dimensions of prosperity it is true that when you believe the Lord your God you are established and that when you believe his prophets you prosper in the name of Jesus I call upon the God of Jeshurun the one who rides upon the wings of the wind and I declare by the mystery of divine supplies that raven that brought bread to Elijah even at Brook Cherith in the name of Jesus may God use men in the similitude of that raven to meet your needs in the name of jesus christ supplies from the north supplies from the south supplies from the east and the west and i pray for your walk with god listen to me i pray for your sensitivity in this season connecting it to your prayer life your word life your consecration and your passion for the things of god i empower you by the spirit find stability in spiritual things no vacillation to the left nor the right in the name of jesus may you be as solid as mount zion instant in season and out of season i prophesy to you according to acts 
chapter 6 and verse 4 that you will give yourself continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word in the name of Jesus Christ may the Lord bless you may the Lord increase you for in Jesus mighty name we pray pastor thank you so much may the Lord increase you in Jesus name